and we have the man himself, Mr. Nathan Tasker, with us on the line <laughs> uh, from Nashville. Nathan, uh, listen, I, I, I love hearing, and all of us, I'm speaking on behalf of all of the Vision family. Uh, we love hearing your heart, and mm-hmm. you touched us so dearly when you talked about uh, what your family has just been going through, but also how it relates back to your music. And loved hearing mm-hmm. some, uh, you know, not only a new song, but some of the classics with, when you were with us, uh, you know, touring for, uh, you know, We Are Messengers. I know you're about yeah. to head off with Casting Crowns that we just played, and We Are Messengers again on another <laughs> on another tour. But uh, you've got a you, you've got a wonderful partnership with Compassion, and and I'm going to be. I know uh, this is like my my theme phrase at the moment. Oh no, I'm going to. Pull back the yes, curtain. Yes, I'm going to pull yes. back the curtain. He loves saying that name. We, 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 uh, we. I love it. We have so many artists come out and tell us about compassion, you know, and and God yeah. bless compassion. We love compassion, but you can tell when someone's. You know, got a polished speech. I'll well, put it that way. And yeah. I was inspired, Nathan, because I was there in the Brisbane concert. And to see yeah. you talk about compassion, the work that they do, but also how it's impacted you personally, yeah. inspiring. Yeah. Like it just yeah. meant so much. And I wonder if you could tell yeah. others who maybe weren't there a little bit of that story. Yeah, sure. Um, should, should I tell, you, tell people how I got involved with compassion? Yeah, yeah we'd love that. No, I think. I think a lot of people expect that it's that kind of moment of like just deep sense of philanthropy or charity and you just, you know, the lightning bolt and you just, whereas I got involved because one of my mates in a house I was living with years ago during university uh, stole my credit card while I was asleep <laughs> and sponsored a child on my behalf. And Let's so, go. It's even God know, can exactly. use the bad. Even God can. <laughs> <laughs> he can. He can use anything. Yeah. And, and to be honest, like when when that child arrived in packet form, you know, and I read through the material, I was really struck actually by the incredible work Compassion does. Mm. And then I was also struck by the fact that I didn't think I could afford it. Um, those were the two immediate things that went through in my mind. Um, and yet I stayed committed to sponsoring this, this little child. His name was Edgar. He was five years old. Um, and through the course of sponsoring him, something that Compassion does that is very unique to Compassion is that they send letters from that child. They send updates from the pastor who is looking after that child in a particular church, in a village. Uh, and so you're constantly seeing this development of a child, not just the way that they grow physically, actively, you know, and also uh, mentally as they're involved in school, suddenly they're learning, mm-hmm. uh, but you start to see them grow spiritually as well. And mm-hmm. it's, it is quite profound to see children who exist in extreme poverty uh, who have a tape, you know, I'm using old metaphors, you know, a a, a soundtrack in their head that tells them that extreme poverty makes them valueless, worthless. They have no meaning in life whatsoever, Mm -hmm. Uh, which is what extreme poverty really does. You know, apart from the things we all see, it's that loop in the head that says you're you're worthless in this world. Suddenly compassion comes in, a sponsor comes in, and says, you matter. Yeah. You matter not just to me, you matter to God. You have value, you have worth, um, even in the midst of your circumstances. And I tell you, it blows kids' minds. They they just cannot believe that that kind of love, that kind of hope actually exists in the world. And they become followers of Jesus. They become active, engaged members of their communities, their families change. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible the the true hope what it can do in a, in the life of a child in any of our lives is remarkable. So, so on, on the back of the on the back of the tour, uh, how yeah. give us have you got any stats? Have you got any results? How, how did Compassion do? Because I mean, yeah. we love seeing you guys in perform, but you know, there's a yeah. little thing in the background where we're like, man, we're hoping that we see some good good figures out of this. Yeah, me, me too. I'm always hoping. You know, my dream, by the way, is that you know everyone, especially anyone who says that they follow Jesus. My hope is that there's like a child's face with a magnet on the refrigerator door. That's right. Uh, You know what I mean? Like I really truly believe that um, because I think that as much as it changes the child's life, uh, God actually uses it to change our lives because we start to value things differently. We start to value people differently. Mm. We start to become truly citizens of this world, not just of the country we live in. So many powerful things happen. Anyway. The stats. Um, we had, and to be honest, this is where I could do with your listeners' support. We had around 230 children, like child profiles, handed out during the concerts. We did five concerts, and so an enormous number of children went out. And I don't think Compact was really prepared for how many were going to go out. Yeah. The hardest thing was trying to remind people that 
just taking a child profile didn't mean that you sponsored a child. You had to right. physically use the QR code and, you know, fill in some information and then away you go. Um, we had, I think it was close to 130 of those 230 actually do that. Wow. So sponsored children, lives changed, which is remarkable. So there's another 100 out there from, you know, people seeing the content. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. And they're probably in a desk drawer or on, yes. on a chest in drawers, a purse. you know what I mean? Yep, yep, in that bag. Just waiting. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, you know, it actually, not that you guys talk about behind the curtain, is that your phrase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulling back the curtain. <laughs> Pulling back, back the curtain. curtain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulling back the curtain. Okay. Here we go. Pull back the curtain moment for you, because I, I love talking about compassion. I've done it for a long time. Um, is that in the moment, encouraging someone not just to take something, but to actually do something yeah. is, is one of the most important parts of what we do. Mm -hmm. And I already have thoughts for hopefully next time we get to tour Australia, if I come and do a solo tour, of how do you uh, encourage someone in that moment to not lose that moment? You know, we are the Instagram, the, the tweet generation yeah. We're here, we're there, we're, you know, we take a child profile and then we're scooting through Instagram during intermission. You know what I mean? And we forget. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, how can we stay in that moment? And yeah. so part of my work alongside Compassion, especially in the US, which is where I do most of my touring, is to try and work out how do you encourage someone to stay in that moment Wow. instead of just losing it as soon as intermission begins. Mm. Um, it's really, really vital, really important, but... I mean, I'm grateful. I think that if we had a tour and one child had it got sponsored, that's a great tour. That's a success in the economy of heaven. Yeah. So, well, that, it's, well, it's really how to how to do it without stealing someone's credit card and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is how your friend got you to stay in the moment, that's isn't it, Nathan? Still the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that, uh, Nathan. We could talk to you literally all day. We're we're butting into the news time here, but I just wanted to give you one personal testimony here. I'm very grateful, and I'm and you know I'm Phil knows I'm a big softy here. I get choked. He does up. cry a lot. Nathan. I cry a lot, buddy. We get old. We cry. You know what it's about. I know uh, the feeling. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my 15-year-old, my youngest son, Judah, um, he's, he has sat through being being my son and being at the events that we've been at. He sat through a yeah. hundred of these things. You touched yeah. him. You touched yeah. him, mate. And he went forward huh. and he grabbed it he, and he, he followed through. He was one of those kids that scanned the oh, thing. Man. And he is, oh, so, he is so encouraged and it is affecting him spiritually. <laughs> I reckon yeah. more that it's going to affect this kid. He is on fire because he, he wants to see a wow. difference in this kid's life. Mm -hmm. So thank yeah. you, my friend. Oh, thank you. That is, I mean, what incredible, you know, that's what we hope and pray for every night. And uh, what an amazing, amazing testimony. And 15 years old, yeah. man, you know what I mean? Look, is, <laughs> you should be very, very proud. I'm, You've done something good. I'm the, very thankful to you. Day, I'm brother. thankful to you and the yeah. Compassion team. Well, I, I'm <laughs> really, really amazed. I love knowing there are young people engaging in the world just yeah. like that. that yeah. Doesn't that bring you some hope for the future? It does. It does. It does. It does. Listen, yeah. bud, uh, thank you so much for your time.